Good evening, everyone. I am John Michael, and today we are playing SimCity, the new one that just released uh, today, which is March 5th, 2013. Um, this will be the first of a series of videos of tutorials I will do for the game. And for this first one, we'll be covering how to make a new city and give it the coal specialization. So let's get started. So here we are at the region select screen, and I'm going to go with Horizon Archip Archipelago. So here we are at the region select screen, and I'm going for the Horizon Archipelago. Um, pretty much every region has at least one site that has good coal production, but this one just seems nice, so we're going to go with this one. I'm going to name it Pyro's Tutorial Region. And set it to private just to make sure, well, I have some privacy. Um, the bottom right one here, the bottom right side is Triton Valley. You can see it has some pretty good coal production here, so we'll go ahead and claim this one. And now we're going to get started. So here we are in Triton Valley. It's quite mountainous, but we will work around that. And I'm going to pause time here for a second while I plan things out. Now, um, since we know ahead of time what our specialization is going to be, we can uh, check where the coal is located and make sure we build the city around those locations. So in order to check for your resources, you click the data maps button in the bottom right corner. And there are a lot of symbols here. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, but, you know, obviously if you're brand new to the game, haven't fired it up before, it might be a little confusing, a little too much information. That's fine. You'll definitely be able to sort it out as you play a little bit. Um, what we're interested in is the coal amount. And the bottom five buttons here on the data maps uh, allow you to see the different um, resource areas on your map. So this first button opens the coal map. And you can see there are basically two sites for coal. This one is a, is a nice big one, and this is likely where our main production is going to be. But it's pretty expensive to get there. It's pretty far from the highway. Uh, the road will have to loop around if you follow the mouse cursor like that. Um, so it'll be a little bit of a pain to get there. But right now it's no big deal because we have this uh, close site. And this will work for our early production, our early coal production. And as we make more money, we'll be able to expand. So since we'll go for this one first, the first thing we do is, build, is extend the medium density avenue away from the um, highway. So we have a little bit of room to work with here. And we're going to wind up sticking the coal mine more over here than right off the, off the avenue, but we'll deal with that in a bit. Now the second thing you should consider when you're making your initial uh, recon of the map is the wind direction. It doesn't seem like a huge deal, but remember that um, the, one of the new factors in SimCity, the new SimCity, is that pollution travels with the wind. So if you put houses downwind from your coal plant, uh, you're not going to have a whole lot of happy citizens. So here in the data maps, we click the wind icon, which is the third row from the bottom, second one from the right. We'll zoom out and you can see the wind travels this way. I almost want to say that's north, but there's no cardinal directions, so it really doesn't matter. Anyway, it's traveling away from the highway, up the mountains. So that's good to know. We have to keep houses uh, upwind if possible. All right, so that means, let's close that out. Actually, let's switch back to the coal mine first, or coal map for a second. Since we have to put the uh, coal mine right about here, we don't want to put houses over here. So in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this side of the main avenue for houses and this side for commercial and industrial zones. Should give us a good balance. All right, so we're gonna close out the map and start building our first buildings. And we're going to start with a, me or a rather a medium density street. We're gonna come off this way. And from here we will build some low density streets. I think right about there. And these will be our first houses. And of course, this gives us room to expand later uh, as we um, as we uh, grow our houses. So we're gonna 
know what? I'm actually going to extend that this way a little bit, too. Right now, it's a little finicky um, using the guides when you place roads, so you may want to be careful with that. I'm actually, uh, you can hold the shift button to make sure streets go at perfect 45 degree angles, but I've noticed that when using the guide, it doesn't seem to be, to work all that well, so when I place my roads, I never hold the shift key. And we'll speed up time a little bit. So, uh, there we go. We realize we have roads. Put some houses down here. And I guess there's not enough room to put them over there. I was hoping. Okay, now we need some commercial zones. And you'll notice I have no power in the city yet. This is intentional. Um, your citizens won't start... Ooh, let's not do that. That might interfere with the houses. Um, your cities don't start demanding power uh, for a little bit. It gives you enough time to set up your basic infrastructure. And that's what we're going to try to take advantage of here. I just did a high density street, didn't I? Let's down the grade that. And another um, shortcut button uh, that you might like, I was just using it. If you hold control when you place a zone, it highlights the entire contiguous area here. Very useful for a shortcut. So now we'll go ahead and expand this outward. Come on, follow the guide. There you go. And we will make this an industrial park. Okay, so now we have our buildings coming in and we can start uh, producing the basic necessities of life. Now we're gonna put in a coal power plant here and I'm going to put it near the corner of the area. This way the pollution, well, unfortunately because of the wind direction, the pollution's gonna coat this entire half of the uh, city lot, but that's all right. Like I said, we're gonna make this entire side of the avenue into dirty buildings and dirty zones. That way, uh, you know, we can keep the houses away from them. Uh, I was just there. And since we're gonna be digging up coal, coal power plant works. Should be pretty simple. Uh, except, yeah, that should be good. It still gives a little bit of room to grow. Not enough. Changed my mind. Changed my mind. I do that a lot. I'll show you why I did that in just a second. Okay, when you place a building, as I'm placing the coal plant, you see those red squares and white squares that are around it? That is where uh, modulars are placed when you expand a building. If the square is red, it means it's too close to another building, zone, or road to actually be placed. So we're, I'm trying to get this so I get all the squares white, but it doesn't look like... I'm going to be able to do that if I use a service road. So we'll just do it that way. There we go. That works. Maximum white squares and I'm good to go. So now we have our coal plant. And we need a water tower. The water table is not so hot. Hmm. Let's put that behind the commercial zone. I have a feeling what's going to wind up happening is we're going to... Have, I'm going to wind up having some uh, water pollution due to its proximity to all these dirty buildings. But um, hopefully as we go on, let's in fact check the water table on the data map. Is. That's like right in the way of all the dirty buildings. Oh, there we go. That's what I'll do. I should be able to just put a big water pumping station eventually right around here because the pollution shouldn't reach like this very tip of the water table, but we'll see. For now, this is good enough. Uh, Sims who have just started uh, their lives in your town aren't really all that demanding. So we have a small basic, um, small basic movement going on here. Uh, still need some industrial zones. I'm going to double check the coal map again. I want to make sure it stays away from there. 
I'm going to go ahead and plan where we're going to stick the mine. That's all we got to do. Oh, come on. All right. That water tower. I'm already regretting where I placed it. All right, there we go. Now we'll put our mine right there. Now you don't want to activate your specialization until you're making a little bit of a profit. Right now you can see we're losing $289 of simoleons per hour. But there is a great demand for industrial zones. So we'll go ahead and uh, make a few more here. Okay, now we're just going to speed up time a little bit until uh, we get some buildings that move in. Try to help us out a little bit here. Especially when you're with your very first city in a region, uh, profits are a little slow. But you can see, if you look down here in the budget numbers... Um, it's going up pretty fast. Now we're making 620 an hour. It won't be very long until we're making um, nearly a thousand. But we want to start in on the coal mine early. So even though we're making six now 724 or 728 an hour, um, we're gonna go go take out a loan to make sure we can start pulling up some coal. Uh, I may as well upgrade the service road since I was intending to only stick the uh, mine on it, but. Go ahead and upgrade that. Oops. Oops. Okay, petition to build coal mine approved, as you can see at the top. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, uh, to open your city specialization, simply click the shield icon down here. And you see your six specializations across the bottom. For coal mining, that's in the first one. Although there is also ore mining. Um, I don't believe we have any ore underneath our... Down. So this will be an all coal area, I think. Yep, no ore in Triton Valley, but that's all right. Okay, so now we need our coal mine. Now you can see 22,500, it's not cheap. But we're making nearly a thousand an hour, so by clicking the budget panel, we can open the screen and take out a bond. And. 25 grand, that'll be enough. So we go ahead and accept that. Um, we're, we're having to pay 173 simoleons per hour, which kind of stinks, but this is an investment. Now we just plop down a coal mine, and you want to place it clo as close as possible to the um, center of your coal area. The white circle around the building is your radius, and it will take in any coal that's within its radius, but we can expand it later with modu modules. <laughs> So we will go ahead and place it here. And there we go. Now we are pulling up coal. Um, well, once it hires people anyway. But just pulling it up doesn't really help. Um, you have to have a place to sell it. So if you're going to harvest any resources at all, you will need a second specialization. Uh, we will... I'm going to build some roads and expand the residential area. Then I will show you how to do that. All right, the r what the heck happened here? Seems to be a slight glitch there with the way the road looked. Let's try that again. There we go. That's better. All right, so, um, okay, the second specialization you have to do to export goods 
is the middle one here, the third one. That's your trading specialization. And the first, uh, the first building in that list is your trade depot. That allows you to import or export any goods that you produce or possibly need. Other than people, unfortunately. Um, it's pretty cheap to build at only 10000 for the down payment and only 75 an hour. But right now we can't afford it. And I would rather not take out a second bond this early. So I'm going to speed up time here, do a quick camera cut, and once I can afford it, I will build it. Hang on, everyone. Okay, some time has passed. Uh, I've slightly expanded my industrial zone and my residential zone here. And I realized the hard way that I had uh, built a bunch of um, high-density streets this early for no reason. So I downgraded them, pointlessly, and I wasted a bunch of money. Normally it doesn't take this long to get started. So if you don't make mistakes like me, uh, you can usually have things up and running within about a day of game time. But now that we have the money, we can get started on this. So again, with our specializations, we go to the trading specialization. And we pick our trade depot. Now I like placing it within pro fairly close proximity to the, um, to the industry, uh, but you can put it across town if you want. It, it doesn't matter as long as you have the trucks to deliver it. So we're gonna place this here. It's fairly close to the coal mine. It does cut this street off, but that's okay. Um, you know, you don't have to connect every street to everything. So now we have our trade depot, and the first thing you have to do in order to sell your products is to go into edit and place down a module specifically for the uh, good you want to sell. So in this case, we need our coal storage lot. That'll take, that costs 2,000, which we'll have in just a moment once time passes enough. There we go. And you just stick it wherever, like so. Back out of there. Whoops. Back to city view. And uh, from your main city view, you click the building again. And now this button, Manage Global Market Deliveries, will work for you. So you click that, and you can select which of your goods up here you wish to change. In this case, we only have the one. And right now, there are three options. There's Use Locally, which means it's only kept in your, and your trade depot basically operates as a warehouse. Import to buy it or export to sell it. Since we're pulling it up, we don't need any, so we're clicking export. Now even though we are exporting some, um, the coal power plant is smart enough to go get some itself if it needs it. And when you are exporting a good in your city, your city always knows to get it first. So it doesn't matter what you're producing, your city will use it first before it starts exporting. And honestly, that's all there is to it. Um, so now, what we will do in the short term is save up money so we can expand the, the uh, coal mine. So if you select the coal mine and go into edit it, you can buy some things like signs and other modules to expand its effectiveness. The coal shaft itself costs 14000 but has a, is practically free per hour. And you can place up to four total in addition to the base coal mine. So right now, the coal mine is pulling up 13 tons of coal a day, which isn't that much, but it will get us some profit. Now I'm going to burn the clock a little bit and show you how you can view how much you are making from your coal mine. Okay, it's later that night, and we've added... Let me get that out of the way. We have added one truck... or one um, delivery truck garage to our coal mine here. You can see the second delivery truck garage. This ensures that um, there's always a truck moving to deliver the goods to uh, the trade depot. Now we've had our first sale. The sales are always automatic. You never get to see it other than the jump in your simoleons. But you can see how much it sold for by clicking your budget panel and checking your recent transactions list. You can see we have two transactions for coal, both for 4,423 simoleons that were just added to the treasury, total of nearly 9,000 in just one day just for pulling up the coal. It's great, and it's, you know, basically free, 100% profitable money. So now we can expand the coal mine to increase how much we pull up. We can click the speech bubble here, and we'll hear from the mine foreman. 
that he wants to, uh, as he says, take Cole to the next level. So we'll go ahead and click edit to go back into the building. And now it's time to just add a couple modules. So we'll click a coal shaft, and again, you can place it in a couple different locations. Now when you place it, you can see how much coal is uh, underneath, or I should say in the radius of the coal shaft. So as you can see here, if we place it on this, um, on, on this spot, we'll pull up 242 tons. This spot is 211 tons. So obviously it's more profitable to place it there. Plus, if we place it here, we're going to be destroying a commercial building. Don't want to do that. So we'll go ahead and stick it here. And it's a significant investment of 14,000 simoleons for the shot. But like the mine itself, it's pretty inexpensive to operate. Plus, it creates jobs, uh, making more people happy. And right now, we're pulling up 21.8 tons of coal per day. But that number does not reflect the new shaft. So we'll check in on that in a bit. Now, as we wait for the town to... Uh, go into the next morning and hire some new workers and um, generally, you know, help the mine run. Uh, it's time to think about future expansion already. Now, every specialization has its own benefits and drawbacks, including what type of people are needed to run it. For coal mines and the mining specialization in general, it requires uneducated people. It's not because, you know, uneducated Sims are too stupid to do anything else, but it's because educated Sims would prefer would prefer doing other things. And I mean, obviously there's not much money to be made for the miners themselves while operating a coal mine. So because that uh, we want to keep uneducated Sims here, we're going to do a little bit of a tax strategy. Um, we can't do the, Let's see, we only have 491 people in the city, as you can see in the population graph. So right now we can't change the tax rates of individual tax brackets, but what we can do is we can make sure nobody rich moves in by simply doing nothing. In a coal specialization city, don't build parks, don't build, uh, don't build uh, schools, and wait as long as you possibly can before you start building other civil services. You should get a fire department in fairly early because you don't want the coal mine to burn and just the mere fact the coal mine is here slightly increases the chance that everything around it is going to burn. So we want a uh, we want a fire station, but first we need a town hall, so we'll go ahead and place that up here in the residential zone. This will place it Um, change my mind. Let's not place it there. Uh, let's place it here next to the commercial zones. And we just got to save up a little bit for our um, fire station. But again, uh, because, again, this is... Oh, yes, thank you. Let's name the city. Call it Blacklong. That's a good name for a mining town. So, now that we have our city of Blacklong... Um, but yeah, uh, we won't build schools uh, if... The Sims here want to go to school, we'll let a neighboring city build the schools and deal with it. This is going to be our poor town, not going to have a whole lot of uh, civil services going on here. And with only 491 people, we really don't even need any services at the moment. But again, we will expand residential zones and we will be able to start doing that soon. Okay, a few days have passed and you can see the expansion of Black Long here. Um, the coal mine is up to four shafts, and it can pull up 75 tons of coal a day. So, uh, not only have we expanded, we've, uh, managed to survive a monster attack. But we've pretty much done uh, everything we can in this little area. So now, we're going to start expanding outward to that large coal deposit over here, especially since we're making 3,000 an hour, plus, uh, we've got 50,000 in the bank on top of it, Bonds have been paid off. It doesn't take long once you actually get your economy established. I'm having a slight sewage problem, but we'll take care of that too in just a bit. So since you can build roads anywhere, um, I'm going to go and enter the coal mine or the coal map and stick a road about where I want the um, where I want the mines. So we're going to split this area in half with a dirt road, not with a curvy road. Forgot to set that. And we're just using dirt roads to plan where everything is going to be. I'm going to start stretching it this way. 
All right, now take off the data map so I can see what I'm doing here. We're gonna bring this around. Like so. Oh, come on, curve the other direction. There we go. There we go. Um, yeah. I'm always, sorry about this. I'm always a perfectionist when it comes to my, uh, when it comes to my roads and such. That looks really ugly. That's better. It's still a little ugly, but it's better. Alright, so, um, there we go. Let's see, can I... Or I can pull this off, connect these two. Ah, maybe I can't. That's for the best. Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, it still looks a little silly, but whatever. It works. Alright, so, um, so now that we've basically got a path over there, I'm gonna fill in that section, we can start building a second mine. Now, uh, for your specializations, your next big goal, after you get your first, uh, mine set up, is this building here. This is the Metals HQ. This allows you to better control your prices, uh, sell your metals for more, and even convert it to other things. If we have ore, we can convert it to finished metal. Um, for coal, we can't really do that, but we can still gain things like an advanced coal mine, um, a, an extra space on the trade port, and so forth. So, uh, but in order to unlock it, you can see the little checkbox there. We have to mine up 96 tons of coal per day. We have only a third of that. But since we have all this money, we may as well start producing a couple more mines. So we're going to plop down two mines here. And expand them. If I click the right button correctly. There we go. Not enough simoleons. That's fine. I'm going to burn some clock time. I should be in triple speed for all this. And again, since we're uh, making 3,000, 3,500 even an hour, it doesn't take very long before we manage to pull up enough that we can start putting down shafts fairly regularly. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, again skip forward to when I have this outfitted and show you the metal HQ. Okay, it took two more mines, uh, as you saw, and each one has one additional shaft on it, but we are... Finally, pulling up so much coal that we can build, wrong button, we can build a Metals HQ. Um, it costs a little bit of cash, so I'm going to just take out a quick bond. I could wait, but I'm too excited to get this thing built, so we're just going to go ahead and borrow the money for it. Alright, we're going to stick the, uh, let's see, let's put it up here by the water towers, on the service road, because that makes sense. Okay. Now, um, there we go. Now, these modules are extremely expensive, but they allow you to use additional uh, powers with your metals HQ. The Commerce Division allows you to send more coal out and for more money per day. The Engineering Division allows you to have an advanced coal mine, and that's what we really need to get going. Uh, so we can pull up a lot of coal and take a very small physical footprint. And the smelting division is only for ore, and it turns ore into finished metal, and again, we're not going to have to worry about that, but, um, you know, it, it's good for if you make an ore city. So that's really all there is to it. Uh, we've got a little city uh, built up. It's not really all that big, only 7,000 people, but we're making a steady profit of 2,000 an hour plus any coal we export. We have three coal mines, two are not even at near full capacity, so we can add those as we get money as well. And overall, we're on our way to making a very valuable city for anyone else in the region. So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully uh, this video helps you get started on a coal specialist city. 
Just realized I have a busted up building here that I... Oh, wait, it's under construction. Never mind. Anyway, um... So, yeah, hopefully this video helped you out, gave you some pointers, maybe uh, inspired you for a design or two. Um, and as always, uh, please check by IGN.com where I'm moderating and writing the IGN Entertainment Strategy Guide for this game. Links are in the description. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll read your comments. Bye.